Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is so eating socially responsible. Socially responsible eating. And everything we eat impacts someone, somewhere, some environment, and also impacts our body. So one of the biggest crazes is quinoa. And uh, it's called the mother grain. Back in the early 80s, Gary Knoll did a project in 1983 called the Egg Project. And he decided that, okay, we all know that eggs have a ton of nutrition in it, right? Because it has to hatch a baby chicken. So he did his egg project and wanted to know what foods would surpass the nutritional value of an egg if there was anything close. And the one food that he found out in the early 80s that far surpassed the nutrition of an egg was quinoa. Quinoa, that mother grain is loaded with everything imaginable that is good for your body, okay? So, didn't catch on to the 90s, mid 90s, really that, you know, this this boom and what it what it's about. So as a result, quinoa on a global level is out of control as far as the market. I mean, these comes from South America specifically. It comes from Bolivia, it comes from Peru, it comes from the high above high in the Andes Mountains. It needs about 7, 8,000 feet to be cultivated. The price has been jacked up. The demand for it's everywhere. Here's the main thing. These people who have survived this grain for millennia can no longer afford their own product. It's like when you get a shrimp farm in Asia. Oh, the shrimp farm is booming and bustling and it must be providing for the economy, right? Wrong. Shrimp farms in Asia are owned by one family, two families, three families, and none of the locals get to eat the shrimp. None of the locals get to benefit, profit, or anything. Well, like quinoa, well, quinoa is farmed by these small farmers in the Andes. The price has gone up so drastically that they can't afford their own healthy food that they're making. The farmers would rather sell it and make the money versus keeping it for themselves, and they're trading out cheaper foods. Now, some of these cities, the middle class can afford quinoa in South America, in the Andes. However, in Bolivia and Peru and Ecuador, the middle class might be able to afford it, but the reality is that it costs more per pound than chicken breast. Yes, more per pound than chicken breast. So of course, people are gonna go to eating out cheaper foods, maybe meat-based foods instead of eating a healthy vegan option as far as for protein or for nutrition or just for food. Um, and junk food is gonna really ease its way in there and become easier for them to spend their money on junk food and prepared foods versus something that's super healthy. So as a result of all this global expansion of the market of quinoa, especially in the U.S., that these poor people are missing out. Now, us Americans want everything, right? We just, we don't care at the cost. A lot of us just think, I just want it, you know, fly it in from here, I'll take this, I'll take that. If every person in the world lived like we do in the U.S., our world would need to be five times bigger as far as the resources that it would require to for everybody to live on our lifestyle. So why do we think that we're special? Why do we think that, oh, I can eat whatever I want and I can do whatever I want? Listen, there's a lot of foods that along the way that have severe implications to small, local, small, rural communities, small communities across the world. And coffee production, um, production of even bananas, uh, chocolate is a major issue in, in Africa, major issue. Uh, nine, ten-year-old boys go out in the field. Um, it, it's not a good sugar production. These are all things that could harm our environment, harm these communities, harm the people that work them, but yet we're just consuming these at massive quantities. And you have these American corporations just keep buying the stuff and buying it and just, and then they're turning a blind eye to it. And a lot of you consumers now are very conscious about this. So yes, you can actually make a difference by choosing a better chocolate, a better coffee, organic bananas. You can actually make a difference in these communities and to these people and make sure that the dollar goes to the proper place and buy from small, smaller or small independent producers, packers, shippers, distributors, stores all along the way. And this makes a massive difference. It's taking the money away from these big international national conglomerates that just think they can get away with anything. Farm salmon is detrimental to the environment. So what happens is these multinational Norwegian companies decide they're going to set up shop and farm salmon where they can actually get away with polluting the environment and, and putting whatever they want in the fish. 
So that's what they do. They pick the countries that will work best for that. And of course, Canada, the, the fish farms own the Canadian government. In Chile, they get away with everything. In Norway, they've ruined it. So now these Norwegian companies have to expand out to where they can take advantage of the resources. And yet we're just consuming all these products. So as a chef, for me, it's extremely important to pick the right choices. And here's what I've done with quinoa. I've done this in, with quinoa since 1997. I've been buying American-raised quinoa from Mosca, Colorado, from Paul and Ernie New, White Mountain Farms. Phenomenal quinoa, but it's always been twice the price, right? I've just taken it upon myself to say, you know what? I'm gonna pay twice the price for quinoa because it's special. I know the people who produce it. It's not affecting the people in South America. And it's a it's an organic, small 500 acres, 300, three to 500 acres they farm in there. It's a smaller produced, farmed, U.S. organic product. Now, Canada does quinoa as well, and they're, they're fooling, they're, they're experimenting with it in the Pacific Northwest. Um, so there are other options for quinoa, but typically when you're buying quinoa in the store, it's imported. It's from Bolivia, it's from Peru, it could be from Ecuador, it's from down in South America where we're taking this fragile, this vital food out of the hands of the people who have nourished this food for millennia. It's part of their culture, it's part of their evolution, it's part of, it's part of them. We've taken this away because they can't afford it anymore. Only the upper middle class can afford quinoa. And it's a shame, but you look at every ingredient, and really you have to analyze, as a chef, for me, I analyze every single ingredient that comes into the door because I know it's affecting something. Did you know tilapia, they pump it with methyl testosterone? That's to revert the fish from a female to a male the sex of the female, the sex of the fish. They make it, take it from a female to a male, so they pump it with methyl testosterone, right? That gets into the water, into the drinking water. It goes into the local communities, that water. That is because, here's the simple reason, because it's simpler, it's easier, it's more cost effective, it's more efficient to clean, because you get more yield, to clean and work with male tilapia. So they change the sex of the fish while they're alive with this testosterone, methyl testosterone, MT. But as a chef, I know, and as anyone who had common sense, well, where's that methyl testosterone going? What happens after the fish eat it? It has to get excreted, right? It has to go into the water, has to go into the local water supply. So what's happening to all the pregnant women in these communities where they farm tilapia throughout Asia and through South America? Well, something's got to be happening, right? Even if, it, even if you can't see it, would you want... Would you want your wife or your mom drinking groundwater that's contaminated, one of your family members contaminated with methyl testosterone knowing what they're using it for? No, you wouldn't. So why would you buy tilapia that has this and then we'll say, well, it's not in my community. And a lot of people do this. Well, I don't know. It's approved by the FDA. It's approved by this. It's got to be fine. No, it's not fine. It's just like the salmon, Norwegian salmon farmers. They know where to go that they could own the government and get away with all that crap that they get away with. It's the same thing with, with everything. They know they can get away with it, and they do it. The FDA is not looking out for it. It's, health, it's wealth before health in most cases when you look at the USDA and the FDA. They're approving stuff and making stuff available to us that companies are making massive amounts of money on. And it seems like they're more out for these guys, wealth before health, before our health. So you have to educate yourself, and as a chef, who I can actually influence people on a nightly basis of 50, 100, 150 people, damn well right that I'm gonna make the best choices I possibly can and keep educating myself as a chef because it's my responsibility. I feel that I can influence a ton of people and I can make videos and I, I, can, I can talk to people and I can, I can let people know where I'm coming from and people appreciate that and that's why a lot of people come back and back and that's why I have a ton of regulars at my restaurant that come from a distance because they know what they're eating is pure. You look at my Facebook page, most common comments, we love the pure food, we feel good after eating, we, have, uh, we admire your dedication, we, we respect what you're doing, we love what you're doing, we can't eat anywhere else. Imagine if all the restaurants, not even all the restaurants, imagine if 25% imagine if of the restaurants were doing that, were making changes, 50% of the restaurants. Imagine, we'd have massive action here. That would sprout up more quinoa farms. And the neighbor in Colorado, his neighbors would say, wow, this quinoa is very profitable. Why aren't we growing quinoa? And there are there is one other farm that I know of in the San Luis Valley in Colorado that grows quinoa, not nearly to a scale of production as White Mountain Farms, 
but then maybe three, four, five guys can start doing it and say, wow, this is viable and we can get real money for this and we can support our family and we can contribute to the community and we can contribute to the health of people. Just some of my thoughts. What are your thoughts on socially eating, eating socially responsible? I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching. Please leave your comments below. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe to my channel, and pass it on. Right, I can't stop it tonight. This epidemic, demic, demic, I'm trying to fight. But pressure's rising now.